She's really spiteful and ugh, can't stand her. Hi, I'm Kaylee and today I'm going to be ranking the villainesses, the lady villains in Jane Austen's main novels. There are some really catty ladies in Jane Austen. Oh boy, there are some mean ladies, let me tell you. So today I'm gonna to be ranking them from the least offensive to the most offensive, most horrible, mean, awful ladies in all of Jane Austen. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if you love to hate a good Jane Austen villainess. This video contains some spoilers for Jane Austen's main six novels. So if you don't already know at least the main stories of those novels, then maybe go read some Jane Austen and then come back to this video later. Right at the bottom with the least offensive villainess, I'm gonna put Augusta Elton from Emma. Mr. Elton goes out and marries himself a rich wife, Augusta. Apologies to anybody out there named Augusta. I just. I just said that name like really mad. <laughs> and she is pompous and full of herself and manipulative. She's just not a very nice person. She's pretty selfish and she's just, she's just full of herself. And of course she does not like our main character, Emma. And she does whatever she can to make social situations awkward for Emma and for Emma's friend, Harriet. Is she actually evil? Eh, she's annoying. She's just not very nice. She's not really evil, but we don't like her. She's annoying, we don't like her. Down at number 11, we have Isabella Thorpe from Northanger Abbey. She's conniving, she's scheming, she's a lying liar. She betrays Catherine, she's selfish. Again, she's just not a nice person. But with her, it's more than just that she puts Catherine into awkward social situations. She actually puts Catherine into situations where her reputation could be on the line. Isabella doesn't care if Catherine's reputation is ruined. And that's why I think she's worse than Mrs. Elton. Number 10 is Mrs. Norris from Mansfield Park. Mrs. Norris is Fanny Price's aunt and she's just mean. Like she's just so demanding and selfish. She doesn't care about Fanny at all, really. She just takes advantage of Fanny's kindness and generosity and she twists everything around so it's other people's fault and she twists it around so she looks good. She's just so fidgety, I don't know. I don't like Mrs. Norris. She's just malicious, you know? She just, she's really spiteful and ugh. Can't stand her. Number nine is Elizabeth Elliot from Persuasion. This is Anne Elliot's older sister. And she's very similar really to Mrs. Norris. She's malicious and spiteful. She only cares about herself. She just puts down Anne all the time. She doesn't care that she puts Anne into uncomfortable social situations. She's just so insensitive. And Anne is a very sensitive person. And so Elizabeth, I feel like, is just always hurting Anne whether on purpose or sometimes maybe not on purpose. She's just so thoughtless and rude. Rude, 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 rude. Number eight is Mrs. Ferris from Sense and Sensibility. Mrs. Ferris is Edward Ferris' mother. When she finds out that Edward is engaged to Lucy Steele, she disinherits him. I mean, she, she leaves her own son penniless. Well, I don't know, maybe not completely penniless, but basically penniless. She just seems like a very hard person. She has no compassion even for her own son. She's just like mean-spirited. Number seven, I'm going to lump together Julia and Maria or Mariah or however you say it, Bertram from Mansfield Park. These are Fanny's two cousins and they're mean to Fanny like since childhood. Everybody on this list is so spiteful and catty and mean. But the reason these two girls are higher on the list in addition to being so mean and spiteful to Fanny, they also don't exactly have high morals. They have no problem committing adultery and running off with men. They have no respect for their family, for their father. They're just completely selfish. All they care about is gratifying their own desires and they don't care how their behavior affects other people. Just selfish and rude and mean. Mm. Number six is Lady Catherine de Bourgh from Pride and Prejudice. Lady Catherine is also mean and spiteful and catty and, and enjoys putting other people into uncomfortable social situations. She's completely prideful and, and stuck on herself. She thinks she's the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> 
And they didn't even have sliced bread back in the Regency era. <laughs> but more than that, she goes out of her way to try to foil any sort of romance between Darcy and Elizabeth. She is so incredibly prideful that she would rather ruin the happiness of her nephew rather than see him marry someone that she considers to be below him. I feel like Lady Catherine just kind of lives in her own reality where she's like this amazingly talented and intelligent person who is just benevolent to the masses below. <laughs> You know, they say that villains don't think of themselves as the bad guy. They live in this little alternate reality world of their own where they think they're the good guy. And I think that is definitely true of Lady Catherine. Number five is Mary Crawford from Mansfield Park. Mary Crawford is duplicitous and manipulative and she will stop at nothing to get what she wants or at least what she thinks she wants. She's also very competitive. She wants to secure Edmund Bertram's affections and then just throw them away later. It's all about the competition for her. Can I get this person to care for me? And then I'll just toss them away. For Mary Crawford, it's all a game. It's just a game and she doesn't care who she hurts along the way. The word that comes to mind for Mary Crawford is just low. There is re really, there is nothing that she would not stoop to if she felt like it would get her what she wanted. And even sometimes when it's not necessarily something that she wants, she just does mean stuff just to amuse herself. Out of all the villains, I feel like Mary Crawford is the one that I understand the least. She just doesn't seem to care one way or the other. She's just gonna do whatever she feels like doing. And she doesn't care if it hurts people. She doesn't even care if it hurts herself. She just does evil things. She just doesn't care. For number four, I'm going to uh, For number four, I'm going to lump together Lucy and Anne Steele from Sense and Sensibility. Lucy Steele, oh boy, she just does not have any kind of honor. She has no integrity. She's very foolish and silly and grasping. She's manipulative. All she cares about is just getting wealth and marrying wealthily, and she gets her hooks into Edward, pretends to feel affection for him, when really the only person she cares about is herself. And then she jilts him and runs off with his brother because now the brother has all the money. She seems to enjoy getting in little, little secret digs at Eleanor. She's the type of person who would blackmail people. Like she would really enjoy finding out all your little secrets and then she would tease you about them in just like the most spiteful, mean way. Ugh, she's so awful. And her and her sister is just an idiot. Anne Steele is just completely <laughs> idiotic. All right, now we're up to the top three most horrible villainesses in all of Jane Austen's works. And number three is Lydia Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. The amount of selfishness that Lydia has is absolutely astounding. All she cares about is silly, foolish, just having fun. All she wants to do is flirt with officers. And she runs off with Wickham. She doesn't really seem to care that they're not married. Like in her mind, it just doesn't matter one way or the other. She doesn't care that she has ruined any prospects that her sisters might have to marry. She doesn't care that she has completely embarrassed her family and that they're basically socially ostracized because of her. She doesn't seem to have one thought in her head to plan or prepare for the future. I mean, just the, the absolute foolishness of this woman <laughs> boggles the mind. I really can't quite figure out, does she just not understand what she's done? Or does she just not care? I think it's probably a little bit of both. Number two on my list is Caroline Bingley from Pride and Prejudice. Caroline Bingley does everything that she can to manipulate her brother, to manipulate Mr. Darcy. And basically she's manipulative. She's absolutely two-faced. She puts on this mask of courtesy when really she's just, she's just mean. She's so manipulative and greedy. I think one of the reasons why she's so high on this list and why she just absolutely disgusts me is that that nasty hypocrisy where she put she puts on this facade of kindness to other people when all the while she's only thinking about herself. And it's more than just thoughtless selfishness like with Lydia. With Caroline, it's very pointed, persistent, purposeful, maliciousness. She is actively working to ruin other people's happiness. Despicable. And the number one villainess 
that I hate the most is Fanny Dashwood from Sense and Sensibility. Fanny Dashwood is the sister-in-law to Marianne and Margaret and Eleanor, and she convinces her husband, their half-brother, that he does not need to give them any money or help support them in any way, even though his father, on his deathbed, told their brother, their half-brother, to help them and support them. Fanny comes up with all of these excuses and all of these reasons why Mr. Dashwood, John Dashwood, does not have to help his sisters, does not have to fulfill his family obligations or the injunction that he received from his dying father. I mean, just the complete lack of integrity there and the absolute greed where you can't even be generous to your own family. You know how in cartoons they have a little angel on this shoulder and a little devil on this shoulder? Fanny Dashwood is the little devil on that shoulder whispering in your ear for you to be greedy and mean. And unfortunately her husband listens to her. The fact that she would take away the livelihood of her own sisters-in-law, that just makes me sick. Okay. And of course, Fanny Dashwood does everything that she can to manipulate the situation so that Edward and Eleanor are not allowed to be together. She is such a snob that she doesn't even want her brother to be involved with her own sister-in-law just because they don't have money. The word that comes to mind when I think of Fanny Dashwood is venomous. Like she is, she is her words are like poison. She is evil through and through cannot stand her. And that is my ranking of the worst villainesses in all of Jane Austen. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what is the villain or villainess in Jane Austen that you just love to hate. And of course, be on the lookout for other videos about the worst villains, my favorite heroes, and my favorite heroines, and even some side characters. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And remember, the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.